Hello, Dr. Della Parker here. Um, I am here with massage therapist Yvonne Schroeder and chiropractor Dr. Andrea Hurst. Um, we're here talking about, oh wait, back up, Stellar Health and Wellness. That's where you can find us in Clackamas, Oregon. And then you can also go to StellarHW.com where you can hook up with our blog, um, link to our social media, Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can want to do that because we do a lot of cool things on there. Um, today we're talking about cauliflower. So you've probably heard about all these crazy things that people are doing with cauliflower, like cauliflower pizza crust and cauliflower rice and cauliflower mashed potatoes. So we're going to do two of those things today, um, demonstrate how they're done. And I've never done these. I've never tasted them. <laughs> Have you? Uh, I attempted the mashed potatoes and it was, it not, was not good. It was not good the way that it was prepared. <laughs> so we're another try. And um, Andrea, yeah, we eat cauliflower rice on the rake, on right? a weekly basis. My kids, like, they actually don't know what actual rice is. They've Wow, that's amazing. I've never eaten that, <laughs> maybe once, um, but they consider this rice, so Perfect. we eat that regularly. And then the other thing that we're going to be doing kind of while everything's cooking is we're going to make, Andrew's going to show us how to make homemade mayonnaise. Um, I love mayonnaise. When I tried to do keto, I actually learned that dipping steak in mayonnaise is actually delicious. Um, <laughs> it's not, it's not sound so, good at all. It's so <laughs> good. You have to try so it. Good. I was doing keto and I was like, oh, I've got a steak, but I'm like, what can I dip it in? Because everything in my fridge had carbs, like, you know, and I was like, mayonnaise. And I was like, oh, here we go. And I was like, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. So good. <laughs> so anyway, Andrea's going to show us how to make homemade yeah. mayo so really we know like way. we're getting the good stuff. Yeah. So let's start with chopping up some cauliflower. Yeah. So Andrea's going to lead us. For cauliflower rice, now there's a different, a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, so we're going to start with just a whole head of rice now, or a whole head of cauliflower. <laughs> it will um, be rice. It will be rice. If you want to skip this step, um, many major we'll grocery stores this. now. Yeah. So you're just going to cut off the side. green part on the bottom. Um, do you cut off the green part? You first? cut off the green part. You don't want the stem or the leaves. Um, that's not going to taste very good in your rice. Um, and we'll grab another compost. So I'm so bad at this. Compost. Like I don't think I've ever even. Do you do it this way? Like, how do you? Would you like some help? Yes. How do you okay. start the cauliflower? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna chop off the bottom. Oh. It's gonna make kind of a mess, and then you know you're just gonna pick out the green parts so that because you don't want those to go into your rice. So and then all these little bits we can put into our work bowl. So you want to use a food processor now if you have a magic bullet or you know something else that's obviously a lot smaller of a space so it's um, not like they need to be pretty they don't need to be pretty at all so we're going to have some chunks like this and then it depends on the um, strength of your food processor i know my food processor this is a reason art it's a couple of years old but it's still it's a great workhorse in my kitchen so you know about this size is going to be great they don't need to be super tiny you know, maybe some of these I would just chop a little bit smaller. Um, so I was starting to say that most major this, grocery stores, that yeah, okay? that, that's still okay. So that's just part of the stem. Um, actually, all of this is edible. Um, you could eat this part if you really wanted to. I don't particularly <laughs> care for it. It's a little bit more bitter. You guys got um, a different level. Like we're gonna go a little bit more full than this. So just about half. Um, and again, it depends on your food processor. I know that this food processor does pretty well with getting most of these pieces, that's probably good for this, um, to a small rice size when it's about this full. So I'm just gonna grab our base and we're gonna plug it in underneath the cabinet. So, maybe. <laughs> I'm going like, this we're going like electrician. Okay. All right, so then we're just gonna put our top on. And it's ready to Whoa. go. So my food processor knows when I'm ready. So just, oh, yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, if you want to kind of keep there's an no... eye on it, you can see, you know, there's some small pieces that are in here already, but there's also, and I can show you, there's still some larger chunks. So you want to kind of keep going with that until you get it all to a small. And that's why not filling it all the way up to the top is important because you might still end up with some of those bigger chunks. Can you overdo it? Really, you don't want it to be super tiny because then it'll just disintegrate when you cook okay. it. So I would say this looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna give you kind of a close up. You can see it's kind of ricey looking. Now there might be some bigger chunks in there and that's okay. So then you're just going to grab okay. see your, banner. your baking sheet. So I use a um, 
parchment paper. That way I have less mess to clean up later. I, I'm sure you guys are busy parents <laughs> too. We don't want more dishes to wash, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just going to dump it onto the baking sheet and then we can grab one of our spoons here and we're just gonna spread it out. So we'll work along and we're gonna finish doing these. Um, we're gonna process the rest of these while we're talking about some of the benefits of cauliflower. Ooh, cauliflower. So cauliflower is a cruciferous veggie. Um, other cruciferous veggies, help me out here, broccoli, I should have Googled kale, this. Kale, kale, cabbage. And, right, kale and cabbage. Um, sure. Cruciferous veggies are so good for so many things. One of the things I was actually just reading about is the um, decreased risk of breast cancer for women who oh, eat cruciferous great. veggies um, on the daily. Yeah. It said, um, we can buzz. Go ahead. It said that women who eat four servings of vegetables a day, four or more, um, have a decreased risk, and it's even exponentially that if it if those one of those servings is a cruciferous vegetable daily. So, um, yeah, cauliflower, yummy, um, good for your body. All right, so. We've got all our rice on here. So I will say that was a medium sized head of cauliflower. My family of four will eat this entire thing for one meal. Um, oh, because wow. you have to remember that as it's cooking, it's going to shrink. Oh, and so okay. we're going to lose some of the water. You know, this is a pretty water dense vegetable. Cauliflower takes a lot of water to grow. Um, there's some, and you know, we live here in the Northwest and all of those cruciferous vegetables um, grow really well here. Um, I have kale out in my garden that is three years old. Um, it's made it through the oh, last wow. two wow. winters. Um, and that's a really great vegetable to keep going. Now, cauliflower does take a little bit longer, um, but there's short season and long season cauliflowers. You can Google all this stuff and find out all about, you know, what might grow really well in your region, but a lot of cauliflowers can overwinter. And those are gonna give you really big, beautiful heads of these curds of the flower. So essentially, this is the flower of that plant that we've made into a vegetable to eat. Um, br Brussels sprouts are another. Oh yeah. Oh, um, those are my favorite. Everybody already I knows I love that. Brussels sprouts too. My Brussels husband. sprouts and bacon in the morning oh, is my go-to. I was so bad. I just heard about that like two months ago and I was like, what? No, scrambled eggs with bacon and Brussels sprouts never happening. I so crave it. I yeah. eat it like three times a week, if not more. My kids are like, why do you keep making Brussels sprouts? And I'm like, they're delicious. So, I wish I knew there's so a restaurant good. in Hood River. <laughs> when my husband golfs over there, he goes to this restaurant and he, it's like, I don't know, it's like $12 for a side of Brussels sprouts, but they're the best ever. And so he was like, I had lunch there. I spent $50 because I brought you two sides of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. I was like, I'm like, we need to go there again. It's I just love Brussels sprouts. They're, They're so, so good. great. The, that plant is also like the most human engineered of that family of plants. Um, really? Because that is essentially the flower bud that we've oh, made grow right. into that crazy vegetable type. Um, so Brussels sprouts are really hard to grow, actually. There's not very many farms that can grow them really successfully. It takes mm -hmm. a lot for that plant to be successful um, because it's so specialized. I always think it's so interesting, like, usually Thanksgiving time when you find them at the store, how they're on that big stalk. It mm -hmm. looks like a giant jingle bell kind of. I'm so always nice. like, that's what it looks like? It's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. So what we're going to do now, we have our rice ready to go. So I'm just going to add some olive oil um, to this. So we're just going to sprinkle it on pretty generously. Um, because this is going to provide the flavoring, my olive oil is deciding not to come out. There we go. Um, and then I usually just season this with some salt and pepper. So I like having a salt grinder. I have pink Himalayan sea salt in here for all those trace minerals. Mm -hmm. um, I personally don't use like iodized just table salt. I don't find that nice to my palate. Plus I want all the extra benefits out of this. I'm sure Dr. Bella can talk There's about also, um, you trade potassium salt. Mm -mm. I haven't tried it, but I know it exists um, for all those like, um, you know, cardiovascular type patients that have um, blood pressure problems that are looking to avoid the sodium. Uh, potassium salt supposedly tastes just like salt, but it's potassium. So it's a lot of times something that we're deficient in and can really benefit heart health. 
So oh, check great. it out. I don't know. Let me know where you find it. Yeah, more alternatives. Tell us in the comments below yeah. where you are sourcing it or where you're getting your um, pink Himalayan. Himalayan. Yeah, yeah. there's lots of different sources where out there. Where do you get yours? Um, I shop at Winco a lot, yeah. um, and they have it in the bulk section. It's $1.20 a pound, wow. um, which is a really great deal if you look around. Um, I think, you know, yeah. Whole Paycheck has it for about $8 a pound. Um, <laughs> so I like to keep my paycheck so I can eat more foods like this. So we have our oven preheated um, to 400. Um, there's lots of different recipes out there that say to bake at different temperatures. Um, I like the way that it comes out when I bake it at that temperature, so that's what I use. Um, so I'm just going to pop this in. So then 400 degrees, and how long are you keeping it so in there? I'm keeping it in there for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, about halfway through, I'm just going to give it a stir so that the top isn't all crunchy and brown and the bottom is just like steaming itself because mm -hmm. it's essentially steaming a little bit while it's cooking in there. Okay. Um, so that way it's more evenly cooked, and I'm also distributing some of the olive oil, some of the salt, getting the flavor of it all kind of mixed. Have you ever tried with other seasonings like garlic or sure. what are you? Yeah, I think those are all great ideas and it can match what you're cooking. Um, right. I just stick with salt and pepper because that goes with everything. Right. And then I can dress it up as I'm serving it with other things. Have you ever made like a ton of it and frozen it? Does it freeze well or have you not experimented we, with that? I don't do that because we just yeah. eat it. Um, I think that it probably would freeze okay, again, because of the water content. Right. Um, when you go to defrost it, it's likely to get pretty mushy. Like if you've ever had frozen oh. cauliflower, like the florets, um, those get pretty watery pretty fast and they don't taste super great. Okay. So the smaller the piece, the more likely it is to stay like that. Okay. And I want this to have, you know, rice has a little bit of a tooth to it. When right. you bite into it, you can mm -hmm. feel that grain of rice on your teeth and on your tongue. And so I want, this to be crunchier. similar to that. So something um, else we should mention is that you can buy cauliflower yeah. that's pre-riced like that yeah. in bags at the store. Yeah, I started to say that at the beginning of the video that most major grocery stores are going to have this. Um, in the bagged like salad area, that's okay. where I've seen it the most. Mm -hmm. I've also heard there's frozen rice. There probably is. So maybe, you know, if you guys experiment mm -hmm. and see, you know, tell us what your time-saving tricks are if you chop it up and or you buy the rice, comment below and tell us what your experience is in using that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're going to move on to our second recipe, um, which is cauliflower mashed, mashed potatoes. potatoes. Um, and so we're going to do the same thing. We have another cauliflower on the talking off camera here. Is there? So what, I don't remember, I feel like one of you told me this, I can't remember who. But somebody said, like, what does it taste like mashed potatoes? I think you told me this. <laughs> no, said, like, it doesn't. It's it not, not a potato, so yeah. it does not taste like mashed potatoes. Ooh, but it does have the same consistency, I think, is what they're going for. So with this recipe, um, and to be honest, I've made cauliflower mashed potatoes a couple of times. My family didn't really love it, and we liked the rice, so that's what I make most often. Um, you want this to be mostly the florets, so you can cut it like this and then you can grab it and just break it oh. so that you're getting okay. just the little flowers essentially and you want see how this has that little stem to it right there mm -hmm. we want to kind of trim that because again we want this to be mostly the creamy flower, flower bud okay. part um, and not so much the stem part okay um, and then that's going to go into we have a pot of boiling water that's over here so is that too much stem i like, think that will be fine that's and then we're going to steam it um, in our steamer so we can kind of. <laughs> Welcome to my kitchen. This is an amazing <laughs> space. We're so glad to have you guys here today. So I have our water. It's already been boiling, and we just have a little steamer insert that's here. So we're just going to pop these in there and then steam them until they get pretty soft. So, you know, about 10 to 15 minutes. We'll check them and see. You know, you can check with a point of a knife and just see how soft they are. Um, Dr. Dilla, do you guys use cast iron skillets at home to cook? We do not. Um, so, you know, just thinking about cooking and other general kind of stuff that you can be doing to improve the health of your family. Um, I personally, we cook with these every day. Um, these are just lodge cast irons. We actually also have a um, griddle and grill that we use. We used it this morning to make our pancakes for bread. Well, pancakes. Uh -huh. uh, we have a paleo pancake recipe that we make every month. Well, my husband makes every week for us. <laughs> Give him um, credit where credit's due. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm so thankful. We have great husbands here. We have great support people. Um, but we use our cast iron skillets most every day. Um, and I think 
I find the research maybe supports it, maybe doesn't. That is giving us just another trace source of iron to totally. our food. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the thing with this, you want to make sure that you oil them after every use. You don't want to let them just sit and dry. They will rust. Um, and you don't want to cook acidic foods in here. So no tomatoes, um, no lemons, no anything that has a really high acid content. What does it do to them? That will also oxidize the iron and can cause rust. Um, so. Once it's rusty, can you clean it, or is yep. it a goner? So I actually can see that this didn't get oiled super well, so you can see right here. It's got just a little spot where I need to scrub it with my um, my stainless steel scrubber. Okay. Um, and then you just re-oil it. So let's say you're at a garage sale, and you come across like a really awesome cast iron, um, but it's super rusty. You can still rehab that. Oh, okay. Um, you just have to put in a lot of elbow grease to do that, um, <laughs> literally. And how are they? Are they pretty expensive? Um, you know, I think that one of this size. So this is a um, twelve inch. And I think this was about a hundred dollars. Okay. Um, you know, the smaller like two eggs fit in here really, really well. I think this is like in the thirty dollar range. Okay. And I think my griddle was about forty to fifty. Um, these will last multiple generations. You know, I hope that my kids love cooking with these and some of the best cast irons that you can get are older ones right. that have been rehabbed, um, that someone is loving and taking care of and using every day. Um, and over time it's called seasoning. Um, when you're using this and you're oiling and building up and oiling and building up, you're not washing this with soap and water every time you use it. Um, you're letting those accumulative oils Ah. down and um, our dog is here just bumping Dr. Della's feet. Um, you're letting those oxidize and then that's forming, then that's what's making it non-stick. Um, Cause I don't know what's in Teflon. Well, I do know what's in Teflon. I don't know what all those chemicals are doing to my body. I don't want those things in me. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I'm making the choice to use these a lot. So how do you care for them then if you're not washing them? So like you, I rinse these out with hot water, scrub them, get any little food particles that are- But not with soap. Off, but just not really with hot water. Really hot okay. water. And then you can put it back on the stove and scrape up anything that's not coming off. If you know, you're really having a hard time, you have something that's really stuck on, you know, you can use a little scrubber like this to just scrub those little bits off. Um, and then you're using your olive oil to um, season it again. You just wipe it off with a paper like towel. Like after you wash it, you do the yep. oil right after. So you want to make sure it's completely dry. So you want to dry it out with a paper towel or a dishcloth. Okay. And then oil it again. There's so many cool. resources online. Um, the Lodge Company, I think it's made in America. You know, it's made in Kentucky or Tennessee somewhere. In that part of the country um, and their website has really awesome how to's for curing for um, cast iron cookware. Um, I also have a Dutch oven that's enameled, so that's another option. If you don't want to care for it, a Dutch way. oven is something else in our house, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jason. <laughs> um, so it's just a really big, deep pot, right? Um, but the one that I have is enameled. I'm going to put the lid back on there cauliflower so it'll actually steam. Sorry, your dog's sucking um, my butt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's an enameled um, thing, and that means that the iron isn't actually exposed. So the enamel is really easy. That I do wash with soap and water. Um, I made grape jelly in it last weekend, um, and it went really great. Wow. So that's awesome. So our cauliflower is cooking away here. We can peek into the oven. Um, if you guys want to, <coughs> should we? We can try and come and show you. Do, 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 do. I don't know what this one. All right, so we're just gonna pull out here and you can see it's starting to brown up a little bit. Um, so we can give it a stir with our spoon just to distribute some of that salt and some of that olive oil through it. And we'll check on this in another five to 10 minutes or so and it should be done. Okay, so you're gonna show us how to make mayonnaise. I am, so we, I want to just have a full disclosure here um, that this does have raw egg in it. Um, and I am of the mind that if you have a good source for your eggs and you are a otherwise pretty healthy person, um, a raw egg is probably not going to hurt you. Now, that being said, of course, you know, right. food handling, safe food handling recommendations are that nobody consumes raw eggs. Um, and that's especially true if you are immunocompromised. So if you have some sort of illness that you're dealing with, if you're pregnant or nursing, anytime, or you know, young kids. 
So anytime when you're concerned about your exposure to bacteria, that's how she's like, oh, sorry, we don't like dogs. dogs so. <laughs> we can tell her to go away. Um, so this does have a raw egg in it. So um, I've had this sitting out on the counter for about the last hour because you want your egg and your lemon to come up to room temperature. That's going to make, so a mayonnaise is basically an emulsion between a fat and an acid um, and our oil. And so you want these to be at the same temperature. If you take these out of the refrigerator and you're like, I'm gonna make my mayonnaise, fail. You are no, not going to have a mayonnaise, you're gonna have so we a soupy mess. So we talked about this, about how I cannot do the Miracle Whip situation. Oh. When you say lemon, I think of more tangy Miracle Whip. Is it gonna it taste like that? It is not tangy like that, okay. no. Um, so there's so many recipes that are out there. Um, I use one, it's from Primal Foods, so Mark Sisson, Mark's Daily Apple is a primal paleo kind of writer. His website has been around forever and there's a ton of recipes that are on there. So this is one, you know, I have my, my handwritten little recipe book Aww. here. Um, this is actually from when I was a youngster, 1995. It says oh. here in the corner. Um, that was a long time ago. Wow, you were keeping Manny's recipes in 1995? No, no, no. no. This oh, is okay. just mine. That is not what I was doing in 1995. No. I'll tell you that. Um, this is just my book where I write down all the things that I'm going to make regularly. So um, this is a recipe that I go for. Um, so you, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. I used to use my food processor that we used for the cauliflower ricing earlier. Um, that takes a really long time because you have to slowly drizzle in your olive oil and you can stand there. I mean, it's a great deltoid workout, right? <laughs> really buff doing that. Um, but I just found I'm a busy mom. I have two kids. We have talked about we want things happening fast. And right. so using this size of a mason jar, an immersion blender, you guys are going to be pretty amazed at how fast we just go whoop whoop and it's going to be finished. So, so the amount that we're making, how long will it keep? So yeah, this doesn't have any preservatives in it. Right. So you definitely want to keep it in the fridge to keep it emulsified and creamy as a mayonnaise. This will keep for about a week. Um, okay. It might go for a little bit longer than that. Check it. You know, it depends on how I old. No. It will start to grow mold. Okay. Um, okay. And that will also <laughs> yeah. start to separate. So you'll see, so like, if it separates, you don't want to just, oh, we're mixing that together. It won't really work. Okay. <laughs> it won't taste very okay. good either. Um, so, the thing, the other thing with this, so we talked about taking your um, lemon and your egg out earlier and letting them sit on the counter so they can be together. Um, you want to use pretty regular olive oil. So you do not want to use extra virgin olive oil. Okay. That has a really strong flavor. So you want to use either light tasting or just classic. Um, and you know, obviously to your budget level, there's like a million olive oils that are out there. You can right. spend hundreds of dollars on like a small bottle of olive oil like this if it's from Spain and it's organic and it's, you know, all okay. kinds of things. Um, Again, I am a busy parent with a budget, and so I'm making things that my family enjoys eating. Yeah. Um, so I'm using pretty cost-effective things. So for this recipe, um, and I can post it in the notes for the video, um, you want one egg. We're going to need two tablespoons of lemon juice. Um, there's other acids that you can use and you can experiment. It will make your mayonnaise taste different depending on what you Andrea, use. Andrea, we're not going to be experimenting with acids on this video. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could use we are making mayonnaise. We are. You could use apple cider vinegar. Um, you could use all other things like that. Um, you want a half teaspoon of dry mustard. Um, and then you want some salt. And then our olive oil. So it's really, this is pretty basic. This is all the things that you're going to need to make it. So okay. um, to start with, we're just going to crack our egg okay. into there. I like you do this. I am not a mayonnaise person. Oh. I, I don't like condiments in general. You don't like condiments at all? No, no condiments. Like, are you just like a... I don't like the flavors. Like, no ketchup. Mustard's a huge no. Like, even cooking things. Barbecue like, sauce? Yes. Some. So we're doing... So just cut it in half. We're just cutting the lemon in half and then we're going to put it, we're going to use our little reamer here yeah, and put it into our, I've never even seen one of those. So there's so many, I mean, you can just squeeze it. You can, again, work on your hand strength. There's so many different everyday movements strength. that we could be doing to work on strengthening our bodies. While we're in the kitchen. Cooking. While we're in the kitchen, you know, you could be doing your deltoid workout. You know, grip strength is really important. Um, there's so many different things that we do in our day where you need to be able to do things with your hands. This is um, how much, like, do you say lemon juice? Is this enough? Um, we're going to need, we're going to need the whole lemon because we okay. need two tablespoons. 
Great. And then, you know, you could save your lemon rinds, throw them in some water on your stovetop with a cinnamon stick and turn on the water um, so it's boiling and your house is going to smell really great. Another thing that we use them for is, I don't even, maybe this isn't even true, but somebody told me that if you cut them up and put them down your garbage disposal, mm, yes. it like really disinfects your garbage disposal. Mm -hmm. So we use that. And it yeah. smells so much better. Yeah. It smells really great. Awesome. Okay. So you can see Dr. Dello is pulling out the seeds. Lemons are going to have seeds. We don't want seeds in our mayonnaise. So, you know, when you're measuring this, so we're just going to measure our two tablespoons. All right. So, you know, some recipes call for letting the egg and the um, lemon juice sit together for another 30 minutes. I'm busy. I don't do that. <laughs> we got time for that. Yeah, you can do what you need to. So we're gonna put this and then we're gonna add our dry mustard. So we need half a teaspoon of dry mustard. And then the recipe calls for half a teaspoon of salt. I don't measure salt. I never measure salt. You can always add a little bit more and stir it in if you need to. I think that's probably good. All right, so then we have our olive oil. So this recipe calls for a cup plus a quarter cup. Now, that means that if you're doing this in the food processor, and this recipe was based on using a food processor and not the immersion blender, you would put all of these plus a quarter cup into your food processor and let it hang out. And then you drizzle in the one cup to make your emulsion. So we're just gonna measure it all and put it into our mason jar and okay. then use the immersion blender. So when you guys are doing this, I'm gonna check the cauliflower oh, great. to make sure it's not too soft. Yes. All right, so there's our quarter cup because I have a one cup measuring cup here. And then I'm gonna see how much we get out of this bottle. So that was another half cup. And then we're gonna grab. So you like mayonnaise on steak. What else do you like mm -hmm. mayonnaise on? I like mayonnaise on everything. I don't know, I'm same here. Like I like, Brussels sprouts? Have you tried it on oh, Brussels sprouts I yet? It. Especially like, I don't do dairy, and so I don't know a lot of things that need cheese or something. I'm just like, oh, extra mayonnaise. Like I'm not gonna do the ranch dressing in a roll up or yeah. whatever. I just I'm like, give me extra. I love dipping my French fries in mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. So there we have it. We have all of our ingredients that are in there. So we're just gonna make some space so you guys can see. So immersion blender. Um, you can use this for many different things in your kitchen. Um, let's say you're making a creamy soup that you want to have be all smooth and velvety. Um, you can use this in a pot. I might not use it. I would use it in my Dutch oven that's enameled. I wouldn't use this in a like um, tafla. <laughs> I wouldn't use this in a nonstick pan because I don't want these little blades touching the edges and maybe flaking off some of that stuff into my food. Um, but. You can use this to make baby food. Um, oh. There's so many different things that you can use an immersion blender for. Plus, it's really easy to clean up. This goes into the dishwasher. This gets wiped oh. down and goes into the cupboard. So pretty straightforward. And these are really inexpensive. I think these are like 15 or 20 bucks. So this is a really great tool okay. to have in your kitchen. So um, we're ready here. We're plugged in. We're just going to go down to the bottom and then... Like, how Can do you, you overdo it? Like, is there something that, like, no a reason you'd want to do it more or less? You can keep going if you see that there's still, like, there's a little bit of lemon juice that's at the top here. I'll probably just use a spoon to mix that in. Um, but, you know, that's it. That's how fast wow. making mayonnaise really okay. can be. You need a spoon. I need, need to try this. So do you make this once a week? I do. Um, I tend, my kids don't really like a lot of sauces. Um, so I tend to be the only one that's eating this. I can't eat a full jar of this by myself. I can't. <laughs> Maybe you need more steak. <laughs> Maybe I need more steak. Um, so, yeah. Okay. That's really good. I mean, I would put maybe a little bit more salt in it. But yeah. I was so impressed. Like, I was like, making your own mayonnaise, who does that? It's actually really good. Great. So much better yeah. for you, too. Yeah, because it doesn't have all those preservatives. Just start making this so <laughs> you know, I know that I should weigh 300 pounds. I know this, and I don't know why that I don't. Okay. So, you know, my husband, he likes 
Sometimes he'll eat my creations and sometimes he won't. Um, mayonnaise, I'm still trying to get him on board. So, you know, he'll have a bottle, like store-bought one. You know, so you saw the like five or six ingredients that we used to make this and how fast it went um, versus, you know, the first ingredient in this one is water, soybean oil, olive oil, eggs and egg yolks, modified potato starch, sugar, distilled vinegar, salt, lemon juice, sorbic acid, calcium disodium EDTA, um, use protect quality, um, natural flavor, and paprika extract. Ooh, um, so we've so got nightshades in there, we've got <laughs> soy in there, two really common allergens. So. Yeah, so you know, this does last forever in right. your fridge. Um, however, it also has all those extra ingredients. I did not realize potato, which I have to be careful about potato in my diet. I never realized that it's in mayonnaise. That is crazy. You know, and I don't think, you know, obviously this is a great lesson for read your labels. See what's yeah. hiding in those foods that you're eating commonly that might be irritating you. And maybe that's a reason why you would come and see Dr. Della to do some food sensitivity testing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and maybe think about doing some of these things where you're going to make some of this stuff at home on your own. Um, so let's check on our cauliflower rice and see if it's about done. Take it. Yeah, you're yeah. Like, you're drink this now. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. So our cauliflower rice is just about done here. Here. Thank you. So you can see I'll fold down the paper here um, that it's got some nice golden color to it, and this would be ready to serve up. Um, you know, underneath anything where you would use rice typically. Um, so you can see it shrunk down quite a bit, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, we could keep cooking this. Some of the stuff in the middle is just a little bit um, still crispy or crunchy. Um, so like we were talking about mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. still tastes like cauliflower. Does this still taste cauliflower-y or is it more bland like a rice? I think it's still a little bit on the bland side. Um, I don't, I haven't eaten rice in a really long time, so I'm not as concerned about does it really taste like rice anymore. I just think of it as a base for other stuff. Um, honestly, we're eating this under a curry most of the time, so okay. I'm getting the flavors. The texture of, is a little bit more what you're looking for. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, you know, you're welcome to grab a spoon and tell us what you think it tastes like. How's our, um, our steamed cauliflower looking? It was still pretty good. Is it yeah. softer? It's softer. It's still not quite finished all the way. Okay. You might have to give a little tutorial about what we'll do with this to yeah. create it into um, That's really good. the potatoes. Okay, now I gotta taste it. Great. I was say it's just, I mean it does. It has the texture. There's a bit of the cauliflower flavor, but if you're doing it with a curry or a teriyaki or however most people would be doing rice. Right. Yeah, you know, most times rice is the accompaniment underneath something else. It's not mm -hmm. really, really good. Yeah. the side dish I by mean, itself. I eat a bowl of it. <laughs> I eat a bowl of it by itself. Yeah. You know, you could use your mayonnaise and oh my gosh, put it on top. So doing that. <laughs> Drizzle mayonnaise on top. <laughs> you would probably end up with olive oil and egg separated. So the right. other thing with the mayonnaise is that it will separate if it's really hot. So you know, yeah. over a summer, you're not going to want to leave it out on the counter <laughs> to like be doing other stuff. I think mayonnaise on a countertop is, or in the summer heat is always a bad idea, right? Yeah. Again, food safety. This has mm -hmm. a raw egg in it. Um, you wouldn't want to leave it out. Um, I probably wouldn't use that to make like a potato salad or something else where it's going to potentially be out for a long time. I'm using that if I'm as a dressing on something else. Um, something that I do use that for is to make a ranch. Oh. Um, so all you would do is take your mayonnaise base and then dump in some like dried Italian herb mix, mm -hmm. stir it together, and then you have a dip for chopped vegetables. Um, that's great in a kid lunch box um, with a little yeah. to-go cup. Um, and then that way, you know, because most of those types of dips are based off of sour cream. Um, and if you can't do dairy, then yeah. So to finish up your cauliflower um, mashed potatoes, um, what you would do is you would take your steamed cauliflower and then you would want to put it into like a kitchen towel um, or some cheesecloth, something that you're going to be able to squeeze and get all that residual liquid out because you want this to be as dry as possible. Think about when you're making a potato and you're going to make mashed potatoes, they're yeah, when really all, dry. Yeah. Um, and then you're adding liquid to make it that creamy kind of mashed right. consistency. So you want to get out some of the liquid that's still residual in here. Um, and then the recipe that I use that we can link to um, uses or coconut milk, 
garlic, so dairy free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, salt and pepper. So it's really, it's again, just a couple of ingredients. It's pretty fast. And I think that that is probably a really awesome, healthy paleo way to go about it. Um, if you're just trying to want to replace the potatoes, I know that my mom makes it with straight up milk and then covers it all with cheese and everybody seems to love it. Um, yeah. But we're trying to be a little healthier. Yeah, sure. So I think use this as your base and then yeah. add to it whatever you would normally yeah, to mashed potatoes. And then let us know, totally try all these things. Let us know what you think, what your favorites are, how you've tweaked your mashed potatoes that are not really potatoes, um, what you do with this. And then um, what, yeah mayonnaise recipes, any other things, totally put it in the comments for us. Uh, we would love to hear. And yeah, anything else you guys want to add? Thanks for cooking with us. I hope Yay, this inspires you. Um, you know, I'm always trying to get my kids into the kitchen because I want them to develop healthy habits for yeah. eating later in life. And my kids love helping me make the rice. Um, they love pushing down the top. They love seeing it, yeah. running around. Um, and then they love eating it too. So, you know, there's some really good things that kids that are involved in cooking are more likely to eat what you cook. Totally. Um, I think we've all had experience with picky eaters. Um, and so if there's one more thing we can do to get them to eat healthy foods, great. Let's yeah. do it. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Bye. time. Bye, guys. Ah, I can't reach it. <laughs>